A very good morning. So, welcome back to day four uh, session of uh, Atal sponsored faculty development program on uh, generative AI and cyber security challenges. So, today we have with uh, us uh, the distinguished uh, speakers, Mr. Suraj Shirolikar, sir, product ap ap application security leader at Microsoft. And we have uh, one more speaker, uh, Anushri Priyadashini from Dell Technologies. So, the Shirolika sir is going to cover the topic transition from conventional AI to generative AI and its benefits in cyber security. And Madam will be joining along with sir. And afternoon we have uh, security risks associated with using generative AI tools. So, let me introduce uh, uh, today's speakers. <coughs> Mr. Suraj S. Shirolikar, a pioneer program and project management professional with extensive experience in product security, responsible AI, gen AI security, privacy compliance, and uh, risk assessment on products, skilled in compliance review and governance. Vulnerabilities management, detection and uh, remediation. He uh, held key roles such as as lead consultant at HCL, senior staff engineer at IBM, principal engineer at Dell Technologies EMC, and program manager at Microsoft. So, subject matter expert includes on uh, Gen AI security, product and application security, and uh, Advanced Cloud Security Expertise on AWS, Azure and GCP. So, sir has uh, publications into his credit. So, to mention a few, two patents granted and four publications on cloud and security. And uh, sir used to be as a speaker in many engineering colleges. And sir is from BBB Hooply. So, we are very fortunate to have uh, today with us you sir. On behalf of the organizing committee, we welcome you. Uh, Anushri Priyadarshini Madam, uh, Senior Advisor Vulnerability Assessment at Dell Technologies. Um, uh, Madam is a Certified Ethical Hacker Master who is responsible for different vulnerability management activities of Dell products, uh, security scanning, vulnerability management analysis and reporting using multiple tools and uh, she is expertise in image <coughs> container scanning using multiple container scanning tools and uh, she is also expertise in analyzing third party library analysis using tool like Black Duck and uh, core contributor for different uh, security compliant certification and uh, she works on security technical implementation guide, security requirements guide, federal compliance. So on a personal front, uh, Madam is a person having very positive mindset towards life extremely motivated, self-driven and growth mindset and also a Toastmaster and interested in public speaking. And to mention few certifications, uh, Secure Development Elevate, uh, Make Strategic Thinking a Habit, uh, Mentor Connect, influencing, influencing Others. And she has also had uh, honors into her uh, credit, few awards and honors. Under Armour Hub of Fame, and then Unsung Hero Award, Inspire Applause Award, Inspire Applause Award, and uh, Inspire Delight Award. And she has a few publications into her credit also. To mention a few, a map reduce based support vector machine for big data classification. So we welcome you, ma'am, on behalf of the organizing committee, and uh, we welcome the next topic now. So 
So now the session will start. So over to you, sir. So, hello everyone. Uh, hope you can hear me well. All good? Okay. So, hi, uh, thank you for uh, inviting us. That is the first thing I would like to say. Uh, thank you, Mr. to reach out to us and uh, welcoming us here. Uh, as you heard, uh, Anushree with me, uh, she is uh, happy to speak at public places. So, that is the reason she is here as well. So, I requested her to join me. And she accepted that invite and I am really thankful for her as well. Okay, so getting on to the topic, uh, I don't want to be a professor here because I am in to the other side. You all should teach me. So that's the way I want to take it further. Uh, we would like to have more interactive sessions rather than you know getting through slides. I have, if you look at it uh, at the corner, you might see around 60 plus sides. Uh, you might sleep off. So I'll make sure that you won't sleep. Uh, I'll try to keep it more interactive and uh, as much active as possible. So, with going through that, uh, this is the agenda of the topic abstract that we want to start with: the evolution of uh, artificial intelligence. When, uh, when did it happen, or uh, when was the first thing? If anyone of you know when did it start, uh, give me a year if anyone has. Uh, anyone knows of it. 1956 precisely. So uh, the word uh, artificial intelligence came into the existence, and uh, that's the way it has evolved. And then uh, over the years, it has uh, uh, been changing its trends. Uh, there is a conventional AI, and then the topic today is moving from conventional AI to generative AI. Right? So we don't stop there. Uh, I want to give my experience where I currently work for uh, Microsoft. We don't uh, do generative AI, more of generative AI, now it is more called uh, responsible AI. So, generative AI is still there, it is a core part of it, but we uh, evaluate every now and then. I am um, part of a cyber security team member, so uh, I always have my advisories of moving into secure uh, environment, right? going into privacy, security, uh, the availability, a lot of uh, uh, things which are incorporated here. So, probably in that case, we will uh, go forward. Uh, uh, you see the last line. Going forward, we will have more of a responsible AI. It is more of responsibility from everyone. It is not about only uh, generating AI or creating text or anything like that. So, this is very basic abstract I wanted to go through. Uh, and I think Devan has already uh, introduced me who I am. I don't want to you know, get more details into that. Uh, but yeah, uh, I have uh, close to two decades of experience. I have started my uh, career with SCA Technologies. Okay, before that, I, I am also an engineer, so uh, that gives me an upper hand uh, to talk to people, engineers by heart, right? So that's how uh, I would take it. Then I started my career with SCA Technologies, I was there for around five years, and then uh, I had an opportunity to work with uh, IBM uh, as a security consultant. I had to move to US for some time, around three years there. Uh, I also work with IBM uh, Software Labs, which is more of a labs, where uh, how to uh, add new networking security. Uh, there's, there's a, there are a lot of products in IBM. There are storage products, there are servers, there are a lot of mechanics uh, where they need a lot of security and uh, 
AI was still you know in a budding stage, so I was into cyber security. Uh, that's how I started, and then uh, from there I moved to Delhi MC. Fortunately, I uh, met Anushree there, and uh, we worked together for five years uh, around the security. I'll give the debrief of all those uh, security activities that we have done, which will be very helpful for you guys. Maybe to incorporate into your uh, regular routines and then uh, pass it on to the next uh, generation as well. So we will go through those experiences. And uh, currently, I'm in Microsoft. Uh, I had a hectic schedule. I was asking if we could reschedule. I thought that uh, uh, thanks for accommodating. I was supposed to be here by Monday or Tuesday, but I had to. I had a lot of travels, so. I could make it. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, uh, I have some patents. I've done some publications. Uh, they're all uh, good for your learning. Every day you learn. That's a that's how you grow. Uh, I don't want to get into more details of uh, all those uh, activities that I have been doing. I have worked on all the cloud uh, essentials. I have worked for GCP. GCP is a Google cloud platform. Uh, I am in Microsoft, Microsoft has Azure, and then I have been working for uh, AWS as well, uh, then uh, all the clouds basically. And then process wise, uh, if you guys have heard, uh, Agile is a process where we will have to be you know, active day in, day out, and we have sprints every two weeks of work, what we do. It's more dynamic culture, that is the Agile process, I have been uh, certified for that. Uh, yeah. A lot of you know, things that I have been doing, I will share whenever we get to the session. So, pass it on to Anushree maybe and she can introduce. Okay, thank you so much. So, certainly thanks Vidya ma'am for uh, already introducing us, but just a little more about like, uh, what we are doing in a little uh, deep. So, uh, yeah, as uh, Vidya ma'am mentioned, I like, am working as a senior cyber security advisor at Dell. Uh, it's been a decade that in cybersec space and prior to joining that I got opportunity to work in a organization under the Ministry of Defense where I got chance to work with various RD cyber folks in the cyber security space and if you people have heard about the CERT in environment and all uh, which is a cyber emergency response team for India so uh, there I was a core team member for my uh, previous organization and coming to uh, this uh, Dell uh, again uh, since we both uh, I mean I had a good partnership with Suraj, like as soon as I joined, I got him as a team member and trust me, he is an amazing buddy to teach you, to be with you and uh, you know, to share whatever is important for your work. So, security is something which is uh, now taking a lot of attention of the people and certainly it is a space where there is a lot of opportunity to grow and learn and at the same time, you are having a lot of demand in the market, like okay, people will ask you if you are having knowledge about security. So it's an emerging field and along with the security since AI is also emerging so again the demand is increasing the security plus AI the combination is, is deadly so it's, it's a good time for you because when I was a student I was not having this understanding of it because the security is something we always treat is like a secure, physical security or kind of you know parents will teach like a security guard if you feel like never this demand and this understanding was not there before which is these days and it's a good opportunity for you people that you people are getting the space to learn about it. Coming to certain certifications, certainly, uh, they have already mentioned, like, I am having little expertise in cloud, also in security space, uh, cyber, certified cyber security from IC Square, and in Dell, we are having certain different belts of security. So, uh, we are at a higher level of group. So, that's how it is. Again, coming to the patents, because they in India, you learn, so it's good. Along with your learning, you uh, you know, bring something as part of your invention because what better you people can tell about it because you are already PhD scholars and all like we used to publish papers and all right so something similar we do in the organization like Bacon so fortunately I got to with that and uh, since I did my masters as part of my master I published my international journal uh, in the field of ML again now we are talking about Chennai but the ML uh, and the deep learning is already from long so I did my masters in AI space itself and yeah, the agile process which uh, Suresh was talking about. So yeah, certainly we. Uh, I'm also a certified agile practitioner where I worked as a scrum master, product owner for my team. So that's that's brief about it. And what we do in day day to day basis, we will be talking about it going forward in our agenda. Suresh, over to you. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you again, Namji, uh, for the details. Uh, these are the agenda things that uh, we will try to run through. Uh, let's see how many things that we can cover. Uh, but we want to get into more of hands-on rather than you know slide, having a lot of slides running through. Uh, we'll start with something like interactive session uh, where we have some quiz or kind of questions that you might know or uh, you might have questions for, right? So let's start with that and then uh, we'll take this further. So for the session one, a transition from conventional uh, AI to genetic AI. So that's the basic thing, right? The AI came in, uh, what are the conventional parts of it? And then how do you take it to the generative AI? And then maybe future forward it is going to be responsible AI or the way we can uh, think about it, right? There's nothing defined the uh, rules or set of things that uh, you want to give that this is how it should work. It's all customizable for everyone and every individual. And then second session would be more of, uh, there's, a, there's a paper uh, which has been uh, requested that we can discuss about. Uh, we'll do a comparative analysis. There are a lot of uh, uh, efforts put in uh, by Anushri to uh, analyze uh, what are the inputs from that paper and then uh, how do we take it further? What does it mean for us? What does it mean for you? So that's how we'll probably uh, discuss. And then uh, you know, for session three, we have uh, risk associated. Uh, we would like to pull up the session three and four and have uh, more of a you know, lab session wherein we'll do a lot of uh, hands on things and see how uh, it works, right? The generative AI, how it works. Or, uh, the co pilots, or there are a lot of uh, new tools which are coming in the market. Right? Uh, I'll give you a lot of examples uh, how it can be utilized in your day to day life, uh, and not only you know, learning and then giving it up. So, so, moving from there, I think we'll uh, get to the uh, quiz. We have some questions. It's just a warm up quiz to uh, yeah. set the tone of for the day. So, we no need to worry whether it is right answer or wrong answer. Because there's no negative marking for any wrong answer. So, uh, so yeah, we will starting with a basic uh, cyber security. It's a combination of cyber sec, cloud, Gen I, just just you know to lighten up little environment. So whoever is going to answer, they can raise your hand or just. What does CI stand for in the CI trial? Have you guys heard of it? Yeah, that's the correct answer. Okay. So. The correct answer is the same as this folks were telling confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And if you have heard about it, this is the pillar for cyber sec. Like whenever we work for any area, we have to map our all the actions with these three pillars. With confidential means these are just looking just the three terms, but everything at the end of the day is mapping with these three terms. The second question is which is not a common type of cyber attack? Phishing, firewall. Yeah, that's correct. Firewall is not an attack, rather it's a software firewall or hardware firewall that we use for our endpoint security. What does generative AI stands for? Yeah, that's correct. Which is the primary benefit of cloud security? Reduced cost, increased vulnerability, Limited scalability or slower data access. Reduced cost. Yeah, because we are getting everything on demand basis, right? Like we don't have to build our own servers and all. We, whatever we need, the kind of plug and play kind of things. And Microsoft is the one of the leading partner for that. What is the primary goal of confidentiality in CIA? Is it ensuring the data accuracy? Preventing unauthorized access. Maintain system. I am hearing some answers. Yes, that, that's the correct. Because confidentiality is all about there should not be any unauthorized access to the system. We can also share this slide if you want to go with the explanations and all. And I mean, that can. Which is not a common use of AI in cybersecurity. Threat detection, network monitoring, physical security. Uh, yeah, I mean, see, this is how we are learning from each other. So, physical security is certainly not a part of uh, this uh, Gen AI. What is the key characteristics of cloud computing? Do you have some question? Do you have some question? Yes. Okay. They okay. are practically giving the answer. Okay. 
sorry. On demand sales. Yeah, that's correct. On demand sales. And that is the primary actually piece. What does integrity in the CI try to ensure? Integrity. Data encryption. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's the correct one. Data accuracy and completeness. Because we all talk about integrity. When we talk about integrity, that your data should not get tampered. Which is not a common cloud service model. Yeah. Software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service we do have, but we don't have anything called HAAS. What is the primary primary concern with Gen I in cybersecurity? Too slow processing, limited creativity, potential for creating sophisticated malware, or incompatibility with existing systems. Sorry. Yeah, I don't see any confident answers. Yeah, but many are telling about C, and that's a correct yeah. answer because yeah. we are mapping the Gen I with the cyber security, and out of all the four answers, that's the most correct one. What does availability in the CI try to focus on? Yeah. Reliable access to resources. Yeah. So the one who is authorized, they should get the access, and the one who should not authorize, they should not. So. Getting gaining access for the authorized users also, it's a primary concern because if the system will get unavailable, they will not get the resources they need. Right? So that's a correct answer. Which is not a common cloud for again. Uh, okay, yeah, but the here uh, yeah. which one? Quantum. That's correct. Public, private, and hybrid we do have, but not a quantum. And what is the key benefit of AI in cybersecurity? Complete elimination of threats. Reduce need for human analysts, faster threat detection and response, and lower cost for all organizations. That's correct. Because we can use the different models, right? Uh, which is not, uh, I think it is the second last question. Which is not a typical feature of cloud security? Data encryption, access control, physical server protection, and compliance management. Which is not, not a typical. Not a typical. This is the last question actually. Yeah, that's, that's a nice answer. We can have a huge round of applause for our audience. Thank you. And with this, I will hand over to you, Suresh. I think that's it. No, you already have the base set. Uh, the quiz was uh, just for our knowledge that you are aware of a few things and then we take it further from there. Uh, all those quiz questions are uh, nicely curated. We will do a double click on all of those and see what are the details, what, do, what does that really mean for us. So getting on to the topic, uh, we wanted to see uh, examples for each and everything. right? Uh, so there's the importance of evolving on uh, AI technologies here. So there are a lot of uh, uh, frameworks available in the market that people use. And then uh, we will see what each individual or each framework are used for. So by evolving, uh, there is enhancing efficiency and productivity. Why can uh, AI or a product or a tool which can be used for you know, enhancing the efficiency? Uh, the example would be anything which is repetitive task, a human can uh, you know, do automation of it and then uh, an example would be a chatbot, right? uh, you ask for some questions and then it gives you the response. So those are kind of the things, uh, the same question could be asked by other human. So those are kind of repetitive tasks that you know, AI can be uh, useful of, we will have a database created and then all those responses are automatically there. They are all uh, 
what is a, a pre-developed prompts. Uh, I hope you guys are aware of prompts that uh, in, in, a, in a AI tool, right? So those are the things that you can automate, which will have enhancing efficiency and productivity. That is the first part of it. Uh, then when we want to uh, get into innovation, so we want to drive innovation, right? Uh, it will give you a lot of uh, opportunities. An example would be a, a paper, right? Uh, I want to write a paper, a white paper on something, and then give some information to the co-pilot, or open AI, it will fetch you all the data. It is the improvised version of Google, right? I mean, the earlier stages we were doing the uh, Google search and then get out of few things. Now here, the AI, there is a co-pilot as an example. I'm going to take co-pilot because it is close to my heart and it is from Microsoft. So, uh, if I give something to co-pilot, it will give me a summary of what does this white paper mean to me. And can you search some more white papers on the internet? and get me the similar details so that I can collate and have my own white paper right? That This is how the innovation can start. There is a there is one word from this white paper, there is another word from another white paper and then I collate together, I see how I can innovate. I don't have to you know, write all those things again. So this will give you a little context of uh, why innovation, it, it is going to help for innovation. Uh, I am going to come to the challenges where AI cannot do few things. I'm going to give you that particular important uh, role as well. Uh, when it comes to improving decision making, there are a lot of cases wherein we have so many options. Right? A simple example would be uh, uh, driving through some area, Speci specifically in Bangalore, uh, you would like to see an alternative route. Uh, AI would help you. Uh, uh, there are cases wherein uh, you see a main road being uh, faster, but there are internal roads which will take much faster than what we really plan to go. Right? So those are an example of uh, some. Uh, the enhancing personalization, I think uh, most of you, you would have uh, experienced that, right? Uh, you again go back to your uh, legacy style of searching something. You, are, you want to buy something, you will go to Google and then uh, search for, I want to buy so-and-so uh, object or something on the shopping cart, right? That is fed to AI nowadays. It creates a database. Now there is a personalization suggestion. If you go to any other website, you would have seen some ads popping up at the side of your window, right? That is nothing but uh, taken from the uh, generative AI uh, databases. So they fetch you. They have their, they have your own, they have your uh, email ID basically, right? Uh, they will see what are your uh, activities from say last ten days, and you would have done the search of some uh, object or whatever you want to purchase. So that, those are the kind of advertisements that you get it on the browsers, if you have noticed. Have you guys noticed that? So that is one of the examples here I want to see. Uh, addressing complex uh, problems. So what are these? These are all uh, global challenges, example, right? Uh, what have we seen uh, recently? Uh, as an example would be uh, outbreak of COVID, as an example. Uh, there is outbreak coming up for MPOX, which is uh, a recent uh, study which has come up saying that we cannot uh, you know, uh, have a defensive mechanism, but we can have a reactive mechanism. There. We are well prepared of what can cause, what are the types of uh, diseases which are coming in in the healthcare industry. Right? So these, these are the ones which uh, uh, gives you more uh, uh, these are the ones which will give you more uh, analytics information so that you can uh, prepare for what is going to come. Uh, then going to the economic growth, there are a lot of uh, new market industries which uh, are coming up for uh, AI. If you, I don't know how many of you are into uh, stock market, that is an example where people have, uh, you know, opened up IPOs just adding AI to their uh, uh, you know, name of the company and they just blow up the public money, right? You, you go and purchase that. They are definitely not doing anything on AI, but they have done uh, so much damage that uh, they use AI as name and then uh, uh, that's how it is going to have a lot of growth impact. Uh, economic growth, it is going to be very sensitive. Uh, enhancing safety and security, this is going to be uh, another topic. It's not only uh, on your computers, it is also going to be on your traffic, as an example. There are a lot of AI cameras, I don't know if you guys are already aware of it. 
most of the signals, you can jump the signal and you, you don't have to, I mean, there's no cops who's going to stop you. It's the picture, they have an evidence and they can send it to your email or things like that. So, everything is getting on to that level. We are not into the nitty gritty of it, we are not gone to the details of it, but we are, an example would be on main roads, on highways, like you are on the Mysore Road Highway, right? Uh, people think of, uh, I see a camera, I just load off, as an example. But that's how, that doesn't work that way. The AI cameras are placed in such a way that uh, there are two cameras, the distance between the two cameras, if you are speeding up between those two cameras, uh, this, uh, you know, the speed is captured, the average speed is captured, and you'll get a ticket for that. And the end of your journey, you'll be stopped for the, you know, tickets. So, people have, I've seen people who slow down when there's a camera. So, they think that less than, going less than 100 would be uh, good for me, but they'll be caught at the end of the road, right? So, these are definitely going to help, it's going to help all the, uh, you know, getting into the rules, basically, not, you know, going against the rules. So, these are kind of uh, use cases that I wanted to bring in. Uh, any questions? I mean, we are still going to have a deep dive, but if you have any questions, please do stop me. We can have, uh, you know, more interactive sessions. I don't want you guys to speak. Okay, uh, a brief overview of uh, AI and cyber, cyber security. There are a lot of uh, things which uh, uh, keep coming as threat. So, when there is a cyber security need, there is always a threat, there is always a, a kind of you know, vulnerable situation. So, for that I want to give a brief of uh, how do you get into threat detection and prevention. First is the machine learning. Uh, machine learning is more of whatever we have currently in our database or say uh, we already have learned from our previous uh, history. There are a lot of sources, Wikipedia is one of them, you want to search for something and then you get all of information. So right now the case wherein the AI has been uh, uh, operating is not only from the internet, you also have something like uh, a local database, a lot of uh, uh, local information, I mean your college has a uh, lot of uh, uh, internal data which is being placed at some, some certain uh, servers, right? So those are kind of you know sources. They may not be exposed to internet, but they are definitely there uh, for access. So machine learning is one. Uh, we also do the behavioral analysis. Example I, I, I spoke about was on the shopping. Uh, you have done some things, and then uh, we see if you want to change the direction or. Not. All those kind of traffic was an example. There is a lot of automated response. Again, uh, the example was taken. Of, uh, you have a question, I am going to answer in a certain way. If you reach a stage wherein a bot cannot answer, then you reach out to a human who is going to give you a more detailed analysis and uh, uh, get up to the details of it. So, the threat intelligence is another uh, AI system that gathers and analyzes uh, the threat intelligence. There is one on the AI side. Uh, various sources are provide, uh, provided uh, from security teams and actionable uh, insights have been uh, developed. So, usually that, those are the cases where uh, uh, a human is added for the interaction. So, it is a stage where 72 to 75 percent uh, from the study, uh, most of the things are taken care by bot and then at a certain stage where bots give up and then uh, human interaction starts. So, those are the few ones and then um, enhanced security measures, so data protection and network security, these are uh, kind of you know, important aspects, uh, I don't want to get into the details, we will uh, probably have more details as we walk through. Uh, wanted to give uh, what are the benefits of uh, cyber security, uh, its efficiency basically AI has, AI can uh, process a lot of uh, data, it can analyze a lot of data, uh, we used to write, uh, I mean, I have personally written Python programs to, you know, mine some data from a text file of, say, 10 GB. I want to see what are the repetitive stuff, or I want to get the address or phone numbers of someone, right? So, I don't have to write it now. It's all, uh, if you feed into the data analyzer, we have co-pilots that will give you all the details. And these analysis are processed much faster than what I would have written as a, a program, right, uh, from Python. Accuracy. So, accuracy is, human errors are much easier to happen. Here there is no 
a possibility that we will have that right? it is going to define a set of instructions given uh, it will definitely not skip anything of course uh, the prompts that we generate or the way we ask uh, that defines the scope of what i want to know uh, challenges and concentration there are two challenges at least uh, that we see skill requirement that's the biggest problem currently that we see uh, in our industry as well we don't see uh, the right skills available and there is a lot of uh, shortage of cyber security in ai skills and keeping it open so that uh, you people understand what is the what is the need and uh, where is it going uh, i'm going to give you a, a short video of uh, satyan adela i hope you guys uh, know right he's a microsoft ceo uh, he has uh, said that by next 3 to 5 years uh, india is going to be heavily um, writing lot of codes and uh, he is looking for all the ai processing and uh, we are we will be there in next 3 to 4 years and we might fall short of those skills so upskilling on generative ai or responsible ai is the key there is no other option there are people who are kind of skeptical or reluctant of using these kind of uh, tools uh, because they have the routine set they don't want to add something new but believe me it's important for you guys to upskill yourself i mean you don't have to do few things 50% easily can be taken care by the tools what you are doing now once you know the tool how to use it you will be the master of it so the skill requirement is how do you get the prompts i, I don't know if you uh, i don't know if this college has already uh, implemented there is something called prompt engineering which is coming up so there is a total new engineering field Uh, which is more of prompt, uh, just creating prompts of scoping what I need to know or how I need to get there. You don't have to write Python program for that. Now, program can be written by these tools. But how to get what kind of you know program is the engineering uh, style which is coming up. It's called prompt engineering. Uh, so that's a kind of new buzzword which is being used across AI. Let me know if you have any questions. You can uh, probably talk about it. So conventional AI, uh, I think uh, this is what I was uh, talking about. It AI is the first stage, and then conventional AI is again we are marking it as a legacy. Uh, conventional AI is something like AI to also known things. Whatever I know right now is going to be a conventional uh, thing. What I have studied, what I have done uh, as an experience is a conventional thing. but how i can use it will be in the future that is generated i'm going to generate data from that and then present it further so how is how was uh, conventional ai created there were three defined rules and uh, symbolic reasoning to perform tasks so basically a python program is an example right i know how it is going to work this is how i want to do a data mining of certain uh, files so uh, that was kind of conventional uh, AI. Um, this uh, conventional AI will have a certain level of threats, but they are all again predefined. So I will there will, there won't be any unknowns basically. So conventional AI is set of things I do a research or scan or security on the particular data or the database or data sets or information type. Right? So I will know what are the threats. Uh, but when it comes to generative ai it is generating it, it is going to be uh, uh, present and future right uh, it's ongoing thing that is where the threats will be uh, more and uh, applications in cyber cyber security which can uh, be detected by ai are uh, threat detection and anomaly detection there are all possibilities that you know set of things what are the possible anomalies as well Uh, so limitation to this is it can operate only at the scope which i was talking about it is predefined scope if you run it on some cloud or there is a virtual machine say your windows is running so it is very defined to what windows can achieve and what are the details or what is the storage to it what are the applications you run on to it so it is very limited to that scope wherein um, uh, the conventional ai uh, stays there it may not be effective in detecting new and uh, evolving threats okay the definition is again repetitive but nothing new the, 
because there are no external entity here who is going to affect or you are going to add something to that uh, database. So everything is uh, conventional. So how does uh, generative AI help? So generative AI is exposed to everything. Everything here I, I can say cloud, you have your systems, your system is connected to the cloud, it is connected to all the uh, you know, thread, all the areas, in fact threat areas as well. Uh, the only area which cannot uh, reach is the hackers because they have their own uh, way of looking at it. Uh, hacking people have their own VPN, uh, they are much ahead of what we are doing right now. Unless uh, they are much ahead, we, uh, uh, we have to cope up to whatever uh, changing world here. So how does generative AI work? Uh, it learns from the large data sets. So it is learning. I, I gave an example of Copilot, right? Uh, it is not only about the artifacts or uh, your white paper. It is going to cover all the available white papers across the globe, across available in the internet. So you search for something and it, it is going to uh, fetch details from there. Uh, uh, AI can generate articles, stories, uh, poems that we were uh, uh, discussing about, right? Uh, even code. So, uh, how many of you guys are uh, writing code, still writing the code? I mean, given a chance, you should be purchasing a license uh, of a copilot. Or, I'm not going to push it, push for it, but definitely try uh, free trials and then see how it can help you. A lot of code can be written, where people are struggling. How do you write uh, uh, maybe uh, 5000 lines of code? It would take you at least uh, 15 days you know, to compile it and run it and then uh, get it executed. But this will give you a very uh, simple, easier way. You can write it in a simpler uh, fashion as well and then you get the results. So, uh, where are these uh, uh, AI used, right? It can be in art and design, artists and design nowadays, I don't know if you have heard of a few uh, songs, right? There are a lot of songs that uh, people use from uh, old Hindi uh, singers, example. Uh, they have been used and then they put it in uh, different uh, new music and then have their own uh, uh, AI generated songs written on. Uh, so the artist remains the same, but uh, there are a lot of uh, new changes which is happening. In healthcare industry, a lot of uh, synthetic medical data for research and training are being used. People are predicting uh, what are the health hazards. A person, an individual, uh, an individual is not same as the other individual next to you. So the health hazards of that person are totally different than what a person sitting next to you has. So there are a lot of predictive analysis which are uh, being performed depending on the historical data. Say you have your hierarchy of your uh, DNA uh, that is much different than a person next to you. So there are a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, heart attack or the cancers or all these kind of you know diseases which can affect. Then the, it gives the gives you the percentage as well. There are a lot of diagnostics uh, who also predict those. A uh, lot of uh, wonderful tools in AI have come in for these uh, kind of you know, operations. Uh, entertainment industry, yeah, a uh, lot of music and uh, videos have been done, a lot of virtual characters enhancing the entertainment industry with whatever the need of uh, individuals. So, okay, uh, there are a lot of benefits, a lot of challenges. Uh, creativity, efficiency, and personalization are more of uh, uh, benefits that we see. And uh, challenges are ethical concerns, issues like uh, copyrights, right? That's, that's going to be a big thing uh, going forward. And uh, quality control and bias. I, I want to press on uh, ethical concerns. I don't know if you guys have also seen a lot of deep fake uh, videos and a lot of, uh, uh, what do you say, a Bollywood actor uh, talking about a few words and then it has been deep fake by a different vision and different uh, faces altogether. So those kind of uh, copyright issues have happened in a lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, court cases, you know, uh, to get into that and uh, get the regulation. So 
have to be careful with those. These are kind of challenges that uh, AI brings in. Uh, so, just wanted to bring, if you guys are sleeping, I want to bring you alive. Uh, just want to get you the facts. When was artificial intelligence? I think uh, somebody talked about uh, 1956 is the year which artificial intelligence as a world came in. And then, uh, uh, there are a few uh, facts that uh, you already know about self driving cars which are coming up. There are a lot of uh, facial recognition uh, activities which are happening. Uh, a recent example is uh, uh, the passport verification. There is no passport verification. Uh, I just traveled recently, last week I was in the US. So, when we go out from India, they do a passport scanning and then they do a stamping and all the stuff. But uh, when you come back from there, it is a facial recognition wherein it is all mapped with your fingerprints. Your uh, passport, you don't have to you know, stop anywhere to give your immigration check or anything. So that is the level uh, people are living into. Uh, there is no need of passport. The, everything is now digitalized. So those are nothing but uh, part of AI uh, capabilities. Uh, predicting earthquakes and volcanoes, I don't know how true it is to right now, to be frank with you guys. Uh, it is definitely happening in the Weather and uh, Department of uh, Meteorological, Meteorological Department, basically. And then personalized learning, if you guys are uh, interested in some certain kind of uh, learning, depends on your uh, subjects that you have chosen, right, for studies. Uh, it gives you the personalized learning details. Industry use, healthcare, finance, transportation, retail, education, everywhere. This is going to be uh, uh, just uh, before the session, I was talking to uh, uh, about uh, NEP coming up, right? Uh, national education policy. How easy it is being incorporated in our uh, curriculum. It is not easy. Uh, for a change, anyone who wants to bring in change, it is not that easy to uh, incorporate as your curriculum. It, it poses its own challenge for sure, but uh, this is more agile. Uh, it is been the NEP, uh, there is a committee made. And uh, they have done a lot of uh, you know, AI uh, analysis to bring in what kind of uh, curriculum should be good for these particular students. So it has been uh, uh, nicely curated for individuals, but it is uh, it is at a stage wherein uh, implementing that is kind of a challenge where uh, not many or everyone is interested in looking at it. So AI pets exist. I don't know how many of you know. There are cats and dogs uh, there with AI. Uh, we have been hearing about the bots, or there is a person uh, who is AI ready. Uh, but there are also pets. Most of uh, AI bots are female, if you have heard. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, uh, oh, what do you say, in restaurants, there are a lot of bots which serve you uh, everything on, uh, on your table. There is no human most of the places. A lot of new restaurants which have come in with uh, those kind of activities. Yeah. AI will recognize uh, people's voice. It's much easier. It, it is the next uh, upcoming threat which has happened uh, in few cases wherein uh, your parents have been called with your voice and then uh, asked for some money and uh, a lot of many things can happen that way. It is easy to record your voice and play the same and toggle the way you speak. So it is going to be a very vast area and it is going to be extremely challenging going forward. What AI cannot? So finally I have that. AI cannot innovate. It cannot generate a new idea. It, it is still with human. So writing patents, you try going doing the same on Copilot. Ask the Copilot to get me a patent. It cannot help you. It can give you the details of what are the areas you can look for, but it cannot write, it cannot generate your a human idea. So what challenges are we facing is what we are going to feed the system that is going to be AI and not from the uh, legacy perspective. So innovation that is not going to fall up anytime. Idea generation is the human thing. Okay, uh, just wanted to do a comparative analysis of uh, I hope it is visible, conventional and uh, generative AI. 
conventionally is more of a specific task. Uh, generative focuses on creating new. So that is the first difference that we can see. Learning approach typical users supervise learning, uh, but utilizes generative AI use, utilizes both supervised and uh, unsupervised learning. So it can mine from any and everywhere. Uh, the data can be mined from any place. So the output uh, produces based on the input data and the predefined rules. So in conventional AI, we used to define certain rules. Only then uh, it gets output. But in generative AI, you, it can give you, if you don't like something, you will ask for something new and then it generates new idea. So transparency, uh, generally more transparent uh, for uh, conventional AI just because you have three different rules. So you know it, whatever it is going to show up. But in generative uh, AI, uh, it, it is a black box. You don't know from where it is going to give you uh, the details. But it also gives you a lot of threads of what it is going to fetch as an information. It can be used, it can be unused, or it can be anything. Okay. Um, I, you, you guys want a break or something, or you are good, or you want to take a 5 10 minutes break, or you want to continue? Okay, sure. Yeah, I, probably I, I will take five minutes break. Do you want to take some questions or something? So yeah, I will continue for a few minutes. So we are talking about transition to generative AI and how it is healthy because he was already giving multiple uh, use cases uh, where uh, he was talking about the, how the conventional AI was helping and how the generative AI can uh, produce better content, new content for us. Uh, so again, when we are talking about generative AI, we are talking about enhanced productivity. So certainly we are using different kind of prompts and then we are, we are going to showcase in our transition session also so how we can increase the productivity in different areas. Like not only a single, but there are multiple areas including cyber security, hacking or content generation, including your research. Like certain, certainly you cannot write a patent, but you can get the idea, you can get the literature server done, you can get the uh, you know multiple stuff. So with that, you can enhance the productivity of you when you work. Right? Innovation and creativity, certainly with the Gen AI, we are having certain different kind of tools where you can innovate, you are having, uh, you know, I mean, the basic stuff which we were doing by our own, now the AI is helping us to do all the basic stuff and we can focus on more on innovation and creativity part. Cost reduction, certainly because if you are, cost reduction is not only in terms, of, in terms of cost, right, but in terms of time also, when you are putting more effort and time for things, which is, uh, you know, repetitive task or some type thing, then, and you are able to take the help of Gen, Gen AI to do that for you. So certainly you are saving your time and indirectly you are saving your cost. Improve customer experience. If you are able to deliver something on time, right, or something uh, uh, with more sat sat satisfaction, like improved code, say, if you are having a code which is having no security issues or very, uh, you know, comparatively if the security issues got reduced, then your customer experience will be much better than the previous, right? Or a uh, kind of chatbot which we are talking about. Because you cannot hire people for everything to do it because people comes with the cost, right? If you are keeping the physical people, physical, uh, you know, I mean, like a human, then it comes with a lot of cost. So there you can uh, have your chatbots which is talking and Every like 24 cross 7 it is available. So if you are providing service to your customer 24 cross 7, then certainly your customer experience matters. And at the end of the day, since we are work for a product company, we work for our customers. Like they are our God, we can say, right? So at the end of the day, customer matters for us. And their satisfaction is the one thing which we are in 100% should be there. 
competitive advantage like for example there are multiple uh, organization which is working for the similar kind of stuff but if you are able to use AI and different stuff then you are a far, a far ahead with it right because you are doing using a lot of automation you are doing a lot of things uh, faster than them so uh, that, that way you are more competitive than that scalability so then you can scale your environment with a lot of different stuff with all these automations and all and data utilization because this is the era of big data earlier we were not having uh, you know these many mobile devices these many iot devices or now the connect everything is becoming smart and with this all smartness we are gathering a lot of lots and lots of data right your fridge is smart your table is smart your phone phone is smart your house is smart where these all smartness are coming from the data which you are feeding to the system right and all data, whatever is getting generated, we are using that to make our models. Whatever the AI models are being used, every whatever query you are feeding to the system, with that query also your models are getting trained, right? Because whenever you use, if by I'm not sure by if, if any chance you got to use any AI system, it asks for the consent like whatever data you will feed to your system, it we will train our model with your data. So you are generating the data and data is getting trained. So. We, the, these AI models are utilizing the data which is getting, getting generated by us or our devices or the smart things which we are using now for appliances. Uh, now there are certain case studies, we will not deep dive into this but uh, just uh, an overview of like which in all are the real examples where we can use these kind of AI systems. So certainly threat detection and response which is one of the very very primary AI in cyber security and uh, we will be sharing certain prompts also in this area like how in this area you can provide a certain prompts to your any AI tool it can be co-pilot, it can be shared because the AI tools are meant for different purposes right I mean one AI tool can do multiple stuff but the primary function if you are feeding prompting for that primary function you will be getting better results and for that only we are having different different AI tools in the market Phishing detection is one of the one of the very very important use case which uh, we can do with the help of this AI generated tool. Malware detection is another one of the important area, and, and we are having a hands on and uh, depending on the time how much we are able to do here, we will be sharing certain slides which is which is not having any copyright copyright issues to them so that you can do hands on at home also if it is not visible. Again, the automated incident response. Incident response is one of the very, very important area in cyber security where 24 cross 7 availability should be there. Like if any incidents is happening in your org, you should be proactively monitoring those incidents. And with this AI bot, things are going to be very easy and faster, right? Because they are uh, uh, in the process of incident response, we are having a huge set of logs which needs to get analyzed to understand what was the root cause of getting this incident. And many organizations now these days are taking the help of AI to analyze those logs in a faster way. Because if any incidents is happening, you have to act proactively, like extreme, extreme proactive, because otherwise it can be a threat to your organization. So if, if any organization is using incident AI for the incident response logging or monitoring purpose, it can it can give a very, very good uh, you know proactive measures to the org. Other one is user behavior analytics, like for example, uh, whenever we, whatever we do in our systems, anything, anything, everything is getting monitored from our work. So that way also the AI things can be, uh, you know, installed in your machine and that, that can give, like what, what kind of deviation, for example, if, if there is a policy like 9 to 5, you employ should not browse any social media in your laptop, right? So really it will not allow us to open or uh, in case you are bypassing anything, then it will get blocked. So those kind of things can also be done from here. SIM is another one of the very, very important use case where we talk about security, information, and even in management. I don't want to keep going. If you have any question, you can pause me in between and we can talk about it in detail, like whatever inquiries are having. I will just take a pause if you are having any question. Don't feel monitors because you people are on the other side as well as said like we are just we are also learning from our teachers and we are also <laughs> coming from uh, so you people should ask us. Vulnerability management uh, which we do in our organization day in and day out like whatever product uh, we release uh, vulnerability management is one of the very important aspect that we do and 
Uh, with the help of AI, we can uh, speed up the process of scanning. Like in one of these management, we are having different uh, you know phases like scanning, analyzing the reports. If you are having any issues, we have to file those logs. And these can be faster if we are integrating these tools all together. If you must have been heard about DevSecOps pipeline and all those sort of things. So earlier we were talking about the DevOps pipeline where we were focusing on develop development and operation environment. But by all these adoptions of you know different different stuff like security becomes major concern. So now we are integrating the security pipeline along with the Dev DevOps pipeline to give it more uh, you know secure product to deliver more secure product to our customer rather than just uh, delivering the solution. Now people are talking about secure solution, not the, not only taking your product, but whether your product is secure or not. So these are the very uh, good use cases uh, which uh, we have discussed in our case studies. Uh, now we will be talking about the future of AI and cyber security. Like uh, what what and all things can help with all this Gen AI and the cyber security. Certainly one of one of the things is adaptive learning, that where your you can train your model continuously and those models can be adopted uh, in the cyber security space also and integration with other technology. For example, now, uh, when Suraj was talking about the co-pilot tool, right? So, uh, what the co-pilot co is having its uh, different different use cases, but when we talk about the programming, right? So, we integrate these kind of tools with, the, with our ID, like integrated development environment. So, if you are writing a code, right? And if it is having certain vulnerabilities, because sometimes if you are not going by the standard, we might not be aware about like how important is writing the secure code is. So if you integrate such kind of tool in your environment, in your ID, in your environment, it will help you to write secure code in a faster way. Because it understands if you are using certain function that is not a secure one and it can have a data breach or it can leak some memories, it can have a buffer flow issues, it can have certain, uh, you know, certain security issues. And if you are integrating it with, it, it with other technology, it will certainly Human AI collaboration, as he was talking about the different kind of bots, which is going to restaurants or uh, and and whatever the routine tasks and what we are doing, that is going to be taken taken care by AI. Like people are talking about like the AI is coming, so our job is in uh, not safe. I mean, I will say like if you are not using AI to enhance your productivity, then you are in danger zone. Otherwise. If you are using AI along with whatever you are knowing, you are a valuable asset to your organization. So, I mean, we have to be a little growth mindset and we have to go with the technology which is coming in, our, in the industry. And AI driven cyber crime, uh, the deep fakes and all what he was talking about, it's, a, it's an example of cyber crime. Because if you have not said any statement and people are, I mean, and the, and the video is claiming, and because we are we live in a country where we are having a news population and all those lots of forwards and all which comes right and we immediately trust without having any background checks and all whatever is coming we are just trusting the data and extreme extreme such kind of information is uh, you know in the in the air like it, it blow like an air and it, it reached out to everyone and we just believe blindly so we have to I mean responsive we have to become a responsible speaker to not only understand being understand ourselves but also increase awareness to others, right? Just immediately trusting on anything we, because we, uh, mostly in our organization, we believe in a zero trust environment. And being in the, coming from this space, it also applies to our life, like whatever uh, the things are getting spread, whether it is coming from the authenticated source or not. So that uh, validation is important. Again, call for action, embracing generative AI, where and all you can use this. So invest in AI research and development, like the prompt engineering which we was talking about is the very, very, uh, you know, I mean, for example, if whatever be the code you were writing, now this has been written from the Gen AI, so what the human will be doing? They will be writing the code to develop these models, right, so that they can give us the better data. I mean, now you are not writing the code to develop the product, but you are writing the code. I mean, I cannot say like 100% it is going to vanish, slowly it will come. So we have to make ourselves prepared because certainly there is a skill gap already is there and we will not start training ourselves now because in AI space also, in AI space also the days, the things are changing very rapidly. I mean, we are talking about Gen AI, but Gen AI is a boss environment and within that Gen AI also the things are getting changed every day. 
So we have to be little part. I'm not uh, scaring anyone of you, but I'm trying to, you know, make it, bringing some awareness like how important it is. And this is the right time for you because you people are researchers, you people are having the time, energy, passion to do this stuff. So this is a very good area where you can explore. Foster a culture of innovation, again the uh, similar thing, collaboration with AI experts and stay informed and educated. And this is one of the programs that we thank to your college and uh, whatever the faculty which is conducting such kind of program to bring the awareness and keeping you informed and educated. Uh, there are some conclusion and the summary key points which you can take, like transition to generative AI. Like there are different, when we talk about Gen AI, you know, there are different models which work in the background that help us to generate the data. GPT-4 is one of them. Then, because when we talk about Gen, Gen AI, like, we just map it with the chat GPT. Chat GPT is one of the things. But there are many things which is happening in the background. Chat GPT is one of the tools which we use. And in chat, chat GPT also they are having different, uh, you know, uh, different, I can say, models in the background that is generating data for you. And every day, you know, Earlier there was 3.5, RAM 4. So they are training the model so that it can give the results like what you are looking for. And the best way to use is these models or these tools are like how better you are good in doing the conversation. Like you just have, have to do a conversation. We will be showing certain examples like how a single word will change a response like what you are getting from these models. So that can help. And as it has mentioned, like it can help you in decision making, it can help you in enhancing your creativity, it can help you in composing music, even assist in scientific research, and and many more things. Like a, a real world application, if you talk about the threat detection, which we talk, the incident response, which we talk, and the predictive analysis, which is very very important, like predicting the future, predicting the uh, you know environment, weather condition, or it can mean cyber security space too, predicting what kind of threats may come in your organization. So, in all this space, AI can help us. So, go back to that slide. So, if you see uh, the I'm audible, right? Okay. So, threat detection. If you see, these are all kind of you know, present and continuous terms. Threat detection, analyzing. So, it is analyzing. It was analyzing, and it is going to analyze. So, it is going to be. Generative AI is going to be in that scale. Incident response it is already automated. I gave an example of that one day. Somebody wants to ask some question, it is already automated. You don't have to do it. There are cases where you want to customize, you want to uh, you know, extrapolate the scope of it, then the need of your uh, incident response could be different. But based on that, you can have that uh, added. So that is already automated. When you look at the predictive analysis, predictive analysis is already predicting. So there are a lot of uh, predictions on uh, you know, health related issues. If anyone wants to get the diagnosis done, there are a lot of predictions done on your threats of your system. There are predictions done on, uh, if you have seen uh, in the news articles as well, right? Where these many accidents happened in uh, last year. And there is a prediction of the accident becoming lower due to people adhering to all these AI uh, you know, rules or make the speed limit or those kind of you know, these are the you know, rules attached to that and then uh, it is going to predict what is real and go for that. So if you see the highlighted things, analyzing, automated and predicting, these are already in place and it is generating. Every day there is uh, trillions of trillions of data being generated. If you search for something, that, that data is generated. So, it's been added to the system, it predicts, it analyzes, and it also automates. So, these are uh, the key takeaways of uh, you know, generative AI where uh, we are heading towards. Uh, going forward, uh, very, uh, next one is the QA questions. Right? Uh, after this, probably we will move to the responsible AI, where uh, generative AI is. Uh, set of things that we are uh, incorporating into our uh, day to day life. But responsibly, AI is way forward where uh, you will have to have your set of rules defined for yourself for what you are going to use. Uh, so, those are things. There are a lot of frameworks that have been used. Uh, I'll take a couple of examples and then uh, we can take it further. Any, any questions? Yeah, you have? 
you can take it and uh, uh, how many of you guys are uh, using GoPilot or ChatGPT? Can you raise your hand? Okay. Not by 99%. Uh, how do you feel? Is it uh, interesting or is it like you just use it like a Google search and I want something, give it to me and then you get that and then you write it. Is that how you use? Or have you really used it for uh, say programming? Right? Or uh, I want to solve this problem. You have a problem statement and you have solved it. How many of you have used it as solving a problem? So you, you see the ratio goes down. That is what is important. You have to use it as a problem solver rather than uh, uh, just using it as you know search another search engine, right? Uh, give me a ticket, I want to go for a vacation. Uh, if you give you the best ticket, I mean that doesn't solve your problem. Rather you should look for a prompt where give me a vacation with uh, the customized life and giving you a way of life. Example would be uh, 25,000 is my budget and uh, this is my day. So give me an option. It will give you a flight option or it will give you a cheaper hotel or things like that. So that is the kind of solution that you should be looking for. Uh, not just asking for give me a vacation uh, destination, maybe uh, close to three days, something like that. So you give a right prompt, it will give you a right uh, solution. So those kind of things are important. Uh, writing those kind of prompts are important. That is how you will learn. And uh, that is how the scoping of your uh, request also improves. So they are all very important. Mm -hmm. Usually, this is the one uh, where uh, the prompt is This has uh, something to do with historical uh, data that is first for evaluation and what are the current trends and what would be the future trends. So, this is the uh, on the uh, section. Uh, when it comes to stock market, stock market has already implemented, I think, uh, more than uh, 10,000 plus tools of uh, AI, wherein uh, you can click your options, you can do uh, futures, futures as well. There are a lot of uh, you know, stocks which can be predicted which will yeah. go with their uh, again. What, how do you predict it? It is based on your current scenario, where it lies and what is the history to it. So this, this is, um, these are the first major thing. Uh, the history, the present and then the future forecast. Same thing with uh, healthcare industry. So healthcare industry also has a uh, lot of challenges right now, where uh, they are looking at the DNA level. And then predicting what is the health status, current status of the person and the history, not only the history but the hierarchy, which is the parents or what kind of DNA they have. And depending on that, there is a percentage given. So, an example would be a heart uh, problem or a cancer uh, causes it, right? They give certain kind of percentage, uh, they won't give you, you know, they are for sure uh, getting this, right? So that is a predictive analysis that uh, they put in uh, based on your report. Uh, there are a lot of uh, you know, visual information to be added and also your recent tests that uh, they have done. I, I also happened to speak to one of the HODs in CMS. I don't know if you know the CMS is in Mexico. So, in the other place. So they have been uh, performing these kind of activities, uh, having those kind of now base of what is the historical information and based on that they can say. But it is definitely not there. Um, cannot even give the assurance of this is how it works. Uh, it is uh, like, uh, the 
These kind of predictions, uh, stock market is a very wonderful example. Many people uh, tend to get into that, and then uh, the predictions are uh, accurate to some extent, which is fair enough because getting that kind of predictions are not easier in these kind of you know, scenarios where COVID hit and then things change. And, uh, there is something falling on the map there, but uh, the New York stock exchange, right? Uh, things get affected here as well. So it, it depends on uh, those kind of factors. Analysis is a historical learning and uh, Yes, exactly. So, most of the time, if you, uh, if you guys have seen recently, that, uh, anything you buy or purchase, people uh, you know, after the product purchase, they ask for feedback. Why is there feedback? They need this for their uh, improvising. You know, for the customer care of any uh, uh, carrier, right? Uh, they will record it. They want to know what, is, what are the problems, what are the data sets that you can, can pull. These are the information. Somebody is not getting a network and then uh, can be used there. So these are the kind of collections that are useful for predicting where they can uh, generate. So it's all again based on history of, uh, and the data sets which we are generating each and every day. So an example would be uh, creating this presentation. Cases I had to go to Copal and say, Can I have something summarized or given at the abstract paper that we have? Uh, so, when I ask, Can you summarize? This is going to fetch into the database. It is not only uh, for me, uh, but it is also going to fetch into the database saying, This guy has searched and asked for a summary of this page. So, that gets tweeted uh, in the data set. And you will also observe, like if you have queried something uh, earlier, then it will fetch your prior information and based on that context, it will give you the next data. And the response speed will become also faster. Like if you are querying something very new, it will take little time to generate. But if you are something which you are querying regularly, then it will the results will be more faster and different way of getting the results. So that also you can observe by using all these things. Another example I could recall is. I hope most of them uh, use Gmail as their uh, account. And uh, I hope you guys have an event enabled, multi-factor authentication. If not, we should. Uh, you just use your password and then log in. Uh, try having the OTP or you know, additional security for your, you know, your safety. Uh, so, the reason why I bought that example is uh, what if you are connecting to your phone from a different location? There are all cases where uh, it could be hacked. I share my password with someone else sitting in a different city or country altogether. So you should get a notification as to somebody is trying to log in and this is their location. If you have seen that, that means AI yeah, is being only used. There is a location given that this is the place, we want to accept yes or no. So that is where uh, the AI predefined uh, uh, genetic AI is being uh, already used by Google. Uh, so that is one of the key features. These are the things that you, when you look at it, you will come from. But the uh, team behind it is all AI. Uh, offlet, not even offlet, uh, it's been almost six months now. Uh, in my organization, my profile. Uh, if I start typing, I don't know, I think it's even on the Google site. Right? When you start typing, you get some suggestions on uh, what is the next word coming up, what do you want to talk or type. These are uh, very basics. This doesn't need even AI or anything. It is just a you know, historical. Whatever you have been writing earlier, it will look for your previous email and say, okay, you are talking about this topic. But now uh, we have something like Copilot, right? That gives us a summary of what I have to read. I am mean, I mean, forwarded with a lot of emails. I will tell the Copilot, tell me, summarize, and uh, what is my response? What should I respond to this email? So, it gives me a simple straightforward one-liner uh, you know, composed with Copilot. So if I say that, I'll get a summary, I'll have to type there, and just acknowledge if this is good. Uh, that's it. That's how uh, the streaming is going on. Sorry? Yes. Yeah, it has 
usually copilot is alert again. So if error is that will be there on based out of error, there are different tools. Uh, probably we can uh, go through some of them. Uh, I have the prompt. Uh, there are four examples that I have taken. What are the prompt? What does it say? And what are the types of elements that uh, we have gone through? We'll go through maybe some more. What time here the break is? Because this is a new <laughs> because this is a new thing which we are going to start so it's good to start yeah. after break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I break and then ten minutes or how is it?
Everyone in or anyone missing? Or we are still good? Your friends missing anywhere? Okay. Alright, uh, uh, we were talking about uh, conventional AI and we were talking about generative AI. So I was enforcing on uh, the future or being responsible, right? So there are a lot of frameworks which uh, are being implemented by most of the organizations, Microsoft is one of them, Google, Amazon, everyone has their own uh, different kind of framework, how AI could be implemented. Uh, there, there is something that you should be responsible of, right? So that's the reason uh, it's been carved out saying uh, from AI, what are the machine learning that you learn and what are the deep learnings, right? You have a lot of data sets, how do you learn them? Uh, what are the Gen AI capabilities and how do you finally use it responsibly? So, I am going to do a walkthrough for uh, responsible AI. In short, I may be using R AI as, as a term, uh, just to shorten it. So, uh, equally, we also need to be very careful while we implement anything on the security front for AI. And uh, I will also need AI, right? to form security frameworks or things like that. So those are kind of topics that we'll be talking about in this session. So we did talk about uh, uh, artificial intelligence. So that is kind of a super set. Artificial intelligence started in 1956 when I talked about hey, is the super set, everything uh, falls under one umbrella. Uh, next is the machine learning. Machine learning is you start learning from whatever you have. So that is the next level under AI. So, it is again an umbrella, it, it is a subset and then uh, deep learning and then generative AI. So, finally generative AI plays a very small part but it is based out of artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning. 
So the field of computer started in, uh, as an example, right? 1956, uh, artificial intelligence started. Machine learning of AI that enables machine to learn from existing data, improve upon. So we have to not only learn, not only analyze, we have to improve or take what is important from that, right? Uh, what is in it for me? Rather than, there is a lot of data. Uh, if I give you a 100 page book, you'll sleep off with 10 to 20 pages. So, what is in it for me? Give me a bold point, give me some uh, bullet points of what can be used for uh, my exam, right? Is, in, is a good uh, thought. So, that is uh, more of machine learning, wherein you improve upon, see what are the notes, you prepare your own notes. So, these are the things, this is an example. Then deep learning, a machine learning technique in which uh, layers of neural networks are added, right? Uh, they are used and then uh, uh, you make decisions. Some of the cases, again, I will go back to your uh, study material. You have books, uh, you have kind of a sixth sense that this is a very important chapter and then uh, this is what I feel I may get in exams or I may have to study more. So these kind of things are already fed onto the system. So you are supposed to use these kind of you know, tricks uh, to get your exam preparations. So that is called deep learning. Uh, you don't have to uh, use your highlighter, and that is still a old school method but different people. Uh, but this is how it's been fed, the programs are already uh, there. Uh, the way you ask within a prompt is important. What, what exactly do you need from the book or the article or whatever you are looking for. Generating AI. Uh, create a new written visual, auditory, everything. So, you have a book, you have created your notes, that is your uh, uh, machine learning, and then what you bring it from that note and what, if this question has been asked in an exam, and uh, what should I project? So that's called more deep learning. And from there, you write your own story. You should be into a storytelling uh, thought, right? This is what is the concept of one of the a chapter and then how do you articulate and how do you project what it really means is called genetic way. So this is how you can correlate what uh, this kind of hierarchy means. So any questions if you have, uh, yeah. uh, I'll show you some prompts, I hope it is clear. Uh, I have used, uh, there are collections of genetic AI models that uh, produce languages, code, Images, there are different ways to look at it. Uh, so, Chat GPT 3, 4, 3.5, and 4 is an example. Uh, what if I give this prompt? The prompt is write a tagline for an ice cream shop. So, this is the output. We serve up smiles with every scoop. So, this is a simple, straightforward example given by Chat GPT. And it is a real time. You guys can try it, the same prompt, you will get the same uh, answer as well. Uh, same thing with Codex. Codex is more of a program uh, driven uh, LLM developed by, uh, I'm not sure about the organization, but uh, it is definitely open in market so that you can use it. Uh, any questions? Okay. So the prompt here is uh, a table custom. You need to have a table with uh, maybe customer, column, first name, last name, all the, very similar to the Excel sheet that we have create some tables and then uh, add the details of individuals, address, postal uh, information and everything. So the response is, if you select from the customer database, if this is, I feed the Excel sheet and then it will give me a, a program writing for, these are the users or these are the names written in with who has some address. So this is kind of a prompt that I can plug in for. Uh, then DALI and then uh, chat GPT. So these are <coughs> different ways to look at it. Uh, the DALI, it generates images. So this is one of the wonderful uh, tools for creating your presentations or uh, anything that you want for image prospect. So a hand palm with a tree grown on top of it. That's the prompt and this is what we get. Uh, it's pretty clear and easy, right? There are two ways to look at it. Uh, one. It is uh, generating from available sources across internet or it will also create, there are, the second way is it will create its own. So it will have a tree searched on the network and then you, it will have a palm search and then it will place 
across the way you have uh, requested for. You may not get this directly on the internet. So this is uh, curated for you because of the prompt, what you have given. So you say anything, uh, create a tree on, on a chair. So you may not get it on uh, the internet, but this they can create uh, kind of you know, a specialized, customized only for you, the way you ask. So that is one of the pretty good tool. Uh, ChatGPT is more of uh, a text, uh, conversation uh, responses, and uh, these are used in most of the bots. Go to any of the websites, most of them have already included these as part of help. That's the first level. Uh, there are bots who help, there are uh, also, if you go to any of the websites, uh, there are not only the bots. All good? <coughs> Uh, uh, the bots uh, will also take you to a place wherein some things it cannot even resolve or the responses that you are getting not getting it right. So it will have another uh, second database bot wherein it, it gets escalated to some certain level. So is there something like a generic query, there is something like a technical query. So there are documentation, one is on the documentation wherein uh, you ask for a question, you search for a document, within the document that this is the answer that I have to provide and then if you provide. If it is out of scope, I mean, if the document doesn't have the information what you asked for, then it is the second level wherein the technical uh, documentation uh, comes into picture. There are cases uh, uh, in, in our organization, there is a chat GPT, I mean, uh, there is uh, another co-pilot used, right? Uh, we have websites developed. There are two co-pilots being used and you, you might ask why do you need two co-pilots, right? Uh, one co-pilot is good enough, one search is good enough, but there are cases where uh, the data theft happens and you need a lot of securities. Um, I give an example of uh, documentation search and I want something on the technical search. If it is a technical search, you should be authorized to get that details. Uh, I am a Microsoft employee. I can access the technical details but not an outsider. So outside we can only request for only the documentation part or uh, very generic things. So uh, these are different ways of looking at it. There are multiple tools. These, these are few that I have uh, added here. Few prompts that, uh, if you look at the prompts, uh, they are very specific, very clear. Uh, you don't have to write your story that I want this and all those things. Uh, you see the third one, uh, a hand palm with a tree growing on top of it. So, few words but it has all the content for an image creation. So add a flower to it, 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 it can still create, so something like that. So you should be very precise and specific but the way you put it across as a prompt uh, matters. So nowadays uh, even in the search if you have seen you get uh, your custom prompts. So you search I want to uh, get a new cell phone and then you will be prompted for additional uh, prompt. What is your budget? Or maybe or do you have some filters, right? The filters are manually added, but if you say I want a cell phone with uh, uh, maybe uh, 100 GB of you know, RAM or things like that, whatever you want to add that. So keep it in one line and then uh, it gives you the right output. And basically the search. Okay. Uh, on the uh, generative AI LM, uh, applications, maybe um, we can get some more detail. Uh, so basically, we are uh, segregating different areas uh, where uh, these, uh, uh, you know, the Gen AI or the LLM models can be put in. Uh, so first one is uh, NLP, which is a natural language processing. Uh, where uh, you know we are doing the queries in a neutral language, we are trying to develop a customer support system when we are talking about the chatbots and all. So uh, you know, I mean, we uh, whenever you call to different support, different uh, the support center and all. So you, you have heard that computer is talking, right? If you want to, and not immediately the real person is not talking over the phone. So that that is one of the example of NLP. Content generation, as uh, he was, uh, Suresh was showing certain example of chat GPT is how, depending on what prompts you are putting into the, uh, you know, when uh, whatever tool you are using for content generation, based on that, it will be, how precise you will be based on that, it will be providing the data. 
Uh, I mean, we are trying to give you different categories where these applications can be useful, and depending on your requirement, you can apply in your level. Language translation, uh, you know, language trans. There are many language translation tools. In fact, now when we use a team chat or uh, you know uh, or uh, certain other tools, so there you get like, for example, if someone has written a message in a different Chinese language or in a French, so it is having an option to convert into the English. So that is one of the area where you can use these uh, LLM applications. Programming assistance as he was focusing the codecs, again the copilot is one of them, Podium is another one. So we are having different coding assistance which you people can use and you can integrate it with your ID. It will not only help you to write the code but again if you are focusing on cyber security area also you can write a secure coding and it is too much in demand. If you are a secure coder, you are in demand. Education, because we are here in the educational uh, you know, institute, so whenever you are, you are writing, because you people must have it, you are master's students, you are PhD candidate, you are professors, you must have to publish your papers and all. Right? So you, you have to do a lot of literature service and all. So these kind of tools can help you to do all, I mean, again you have to be precise what you are looking for because the way you can make the tool understand your ask, similar way it will be given the answer. So you have to be precise what kind of literature survey you are looking, what kind of information you want the tool to give and based on that it will provide the data. So Clinic, yeah, yes, the personalized learning experience, that, that, is, that itself is a problem. So, you are doing MTech example, in your computer science or I am doing a computer science masters with uh, maybe C coding or some languages uh, as my specialization. What can you personalize for my learning experience? Yeah. So that, that is kind of a prompt where it will ask you to get certified for say cyber security. If you add some security keyword to it, uh, so it will tell you uh, get your certified ethical hacker certification. So that is an example. It gives you a, gives you a personalized experience, learning experience, or example that what what would be your path forward. These are kind of now the highlighted ones are more of uh, you know prompts that you can use for your uh, searches or mm -hmm. and also when you are using these tools you can also specify in which tone you would look the I mean you are looking for the answer and for what kind of audience you are looking for the answers and when uh, it, it comes for the creativity and art for example you want to write a poem right so you can tell I want to write a poem uh, in the flavor of Guljar, how he is to write. I am not telling like you, you are taking the copyrights of it, but in the similar fashion, it will be given to the output. Like kind of words that he was using, the kind of a different, uh, you know, flavor he was bringing. So, accordingly, and one more thing, chat GPT itself can help you in creating the prompt also. Okay, you give some prompt, and I mean, we will be focusing that part certainly, but I am just giving it. You give that prompt and ask ChatGPT to define this prompt. Again, refinement in terms of what? If you give a simple prompt, because sometimes we are not aware, right? Though we want something, but we are not having clarity. So it, it will you you have to give clarity in terms of words, and it will help you form the sentence, and it will help you form the full prompts. So that way also you can. Certainly, it takes the prompt, but you help these tools to generate the prompts for you also. Okay. Uh, again, the clinical documentation, uh, which he was talking about. So, generating detailed and accurate clinical notes from voice or text input. So, these are the prompts which has been shared in the slide, and you people can have a try on these kind of prompts and see what kind of data you are getting, like depending on the requirement. Legal industry houses. Uh, on, on the medical documentation, hmm. uh, retrieving the relevant uh, medical information. These are pretty much important for any doctor. Uh, you are going for a consult, and then uh, there is a nurse who is looking for your vitals, uh, looking for the blood pressure and everything. But they also want to retrieve what was your blood pressure maybe a year ago when you did your master check or yeah. anything. So that gives them a context of what is this. Your trends, are you getting bad on your cholesterol or your blood pressure or anything? So that helps you, you know, helps you 
got to gauge uh, what could be uh, possible from uh, right? So these are very important for retrieving all the data that one which I was talking about history and then the current information which will be for future. And it will also make the analysis faster. Again, in the legal industry, uh, like analyzing and summarizing legal contracts, because we know we, I mean, we know these papers and how huge it is. And I will be showcasing in an example like you are having a page of, I mean, a document of 150 page, and how quickly we can generate a summary of it out of 150 page, just giving the, you know, the URL or the document itself, because. Time is a constraint, we cannot keep reading everything. And if there is technology, why not to use? Like SOPs and all, like it's, it's always used to generate or read using these kind of tools. Again, in finance, like analyzing market trends, generating reports, and providing insights based on financial data. This is one of the examples. Improving interaction with customer service with banks and financial institutions. It will give you the option, like what and all you can implement in your your bank or in your financial sector that can improve your, uh, uh, you know, improve your customer service. Creativity and art, as I will make compositions, lyrics, writing poetry, as I was telling, like in the form of like, you can you can set the tone, who is your audience, for whom you are writing, because we cannot present the same content to everyone, right? After all, like your audience should be interested in what you are presenting. So depending on your audience, know your audience, according to that you can feed the prompt and you can generate the data. Speech to text system and text to speech system. Uh, again, uh, even Microsoft is having their own uh, text to speech converter, speech to text converter. So this is also very helpful. For example, like if you are traveling right somewhere and you don't want to read a research paper, rather you want to listen. So you can use those kind of tools which will help you because you, if you are standing in a bus, just I am giving an example, and you are having certain things to complete, but you cannot read there, right? But you can listen. So in that way, you can use a text to speech converter or speech like if you are having a huge video, video recording that you cannot go through and you want a summary, you can convert that in a text and that text you can convert again into the summary. So this way we can take help of these tools rather than reading everything and going through. Just to these all, everything is coming to improve your productivity and in a reduced time because if some other person, at the end of the day, the market is going to be competitive, right? If one person is using this tool and we are just behind sitting and watching this thing and we are not using, so people are going ahead. So we have text to... Text to speech, there is an example like I can give, uh, how many of you know of uh, Google Lenses? Hmm. So you just have an image captured and then, uh, yeah, it will give you something in audio and then you listen to it. So that's a straightforward example of uh, uh, text to speech. So you just hear or listen out because you cannot read it when you are in the night or so you can just hear it. So there are a lot many companies, Google Lens is an example, uh, a lot many companies who are coming with those kind of you know, features. So most of the cameras nowadays as well have. Yeah. And then again, we have already spoken about this research and knowledge discovery, which we are again multiple times we are taking example of like how researchers can get the assistance of these kind of tools and how it can or certainly it cannot generate the overall new patent, but it will help you to generate a new idea. You can type like help me writing a research paper in the context of cybersecurity in Jena and you will be getting certain response. But cybersecurity in Jena is again a very new sphere, so you have to be precise in which particular area you are looking in cybersecurity, then it will again give you a certain idea. And it will also help like whatever research has been done in the past five years in that particular area, so that those information you can also get. Because when we are doing something we need, it should be some, no, no validity should be there in your, you know. So how the novelty will come, if you will know what have already done in the past and what is the area of expansion, what is the area of improvement there, right. So the history and what you can do currently situation. Content scheduling, these are the days of Instagram and YouTube, might be, I mean most of the people are using. So how these content creators, they, they are not every day going at the same time because and putting, posting their content. They are having the schedule timing where they will just tell their, uh, you know, 
settings they put with all these tools like okay post my content at this time because again it is all about marketing right if someone is your follower and you are not posting the content for two days they will i mean they will feel like okay why you are not posting they are waiting for your content okay so all the applications are working in the background no one is going and every day posting the content uh, whether it is facebook linkedin instagram in youtube so all these tools are working in the background and posting the content on behalf of them at a certain day at a certain time i want to give an example for that as well content editing uh, most of the people who are looking out for a job uh, they have time to search or do a lot of research towards the company on weekends so everyone like that is when they have the time that you want to look for a job or to change something or, uh, but you post it on sunday things don't work for that this is content editing wherein there is a research uh, wherein uh, the hiring managers or uh, the recruiters get active on uh, tuesday morning so you posting it on sunday there will be hundreds of resumes or applications about you mm-hmm. so if you can schedule it on the content posting by say monday night or tuesday early morning that is where you get your upper hand where uh, you are third uh, you are application goes on fit and top of uh, their search criteria so utilities are other thing people do research of that there are a lot of papers of when do the hiring managers look out look out for any opportunity monday they have many things to do maybe and then tuesday is what they want to look out for people who can join and look for a job so these are kind of uh, examples that we can uh, be aware of this is this for the linkedin that's how the scheduling help i mean if you are again the same thing <laughs> product recommendations uh, again like whenever you buy something it will uh, start showing the something similar stuff to you so all the algorithms are working in the behind uh, your data is are getting fetched and uh, you know like you remember uh, when you open a site it tells you accept cookies from there also they are fetching your data so you have to be we just we are in so hurry we accept everything whatever they are telling without reading so whatever is the minimal things even in a phone settings everywhere like whatever is minimally needed because there are certain things without accepting that we cannot proceed but whatever is minimally needed we can provide our data because someone was asking a question we are feeding data to them right so we have to be also aware that how much is important for us to feed the data yeah so that is also a mindful uh, we have to be a little mindful when when we are sharing uh, the things yeah you would like to add anything so much for product recommendations definitely yes i mean uh, product recommendations are being heavily used by a lot of bigger giants amazon microsoft uh, even dell uh, google or everyone right from your search everything is captured and uh, they also start recommending go ahead and uh, try something on uh, amazon you want to shop something and once you have your product listed there will be few others listing uh, recommendations is the word used as recommendation recommended based on your search it is straight forward so they also have all the information ready they will look for all the cookies all the background data set and then uh, have that uh, created their query and then post it in front of you so these are the usual standard procedures everyone is using it uh, not only the ns with query organizations yeah. so pretty good okay we move to uh, responsible ai uh, so we're talking about uh, we're talking about uh, ai and generative ai uh, the future focus will be definitely uh, responsible ai so why do you want responsible ai these are the standard definitions why we as an example i would say that microsoft has been um, advocating responsible ai since uh, i think 2015 and they have already had a framework before i joined rather and they have been implementing all these uh, standards across how to use ai as responsible well. uh, how do you start uh, SB3 is it's just a naming convention. Don't get confused with that. It is secure by design, secure by default, and secure by deployment. So what does that mean? Uh, any product. So you want to go 
first a website, you want to create your own uh, website, you will have to go through all these standards. Uh, you don't have to create your website and then say, get me security on, on top of this. That doesn't work. Things have, things have changed. You have to be on the shift left strategy where why do you think of website, why it is in the architectural phase or the design phase, that is where uh, the security comes into the picture. So, secure by design is for architectural design and structure. Those are the first basis of it. Next would be uh, threat model. How many of you guys know threat model? Have you heard of it? Okay. So, threat model is, is a tool basically wherein uh, you want to create a website and then we can go back to the same example. When you create a like, uh, website, what all do you need? One is uh, your code, you need your uh, e code. I'll take an example, very very key of e plus code, that is one part. You need uh, a VM or a virtual machine or a system where you want to play everything. Right? And you also need uh, you know, uh, how do you say a VMK kind of admin to monitor what you are coding or what you are going to do. So I already got three requirements. Four, what is the data? What type of data you going to store? Or is that data accessible only for you or for external or they generate data while you when they access your uh, system. Also access. Access is who's going to use it. So internal users or people from outside or we have uh, confined some vendors will use it. So users. And then all of this together, you want to log whatever activities are happening on the website. So an example would be your uh, uh, you know, internet banking. Right? First you host a new graph of website. Second is you log into it. Log in is a user and uh, password. Third thing is the transaction. You see, you want to see what has happened to your transaction. Fourth is you want to see if you want to log those, you want to save those, you want to transact more. So every transaction has to be stored in a certain way. So, so all these five or six things together, you need to uh, you know, frame it within that model. That model is you can also scoping uh, what could happen if somebody attacks on the user and the password. I come and get the user information of the password information. So, the second one would be website itself. There, if you have seen a uh, uh, lot of similar websites being done, so that you get onto that and you give your user ID password so that the uh, hacker can take it away and then get into the other one. So, uh, by design, by uh, structure, whatever we have. Those are the things. Then we're storing data. When it comes to data, there's privacy. What kind of data? Are you giving your phone number? Or are you giving your uh, other uh, things like that, right? For your personal identifying information. You give it away to the system in the website, which is more risky. They can manipulate, use it, and then uh, uh, play with it. So for threat model, uh, what we can do is all these data points. There is something like uh, coverage. What are the data points? One is the access side. One is the protocols used. One, the other is your system. Infected system being used to connect. So these are the kind of uh, attack vectors that you can look for before you do a uh, you know, website posting. So that model is a tool by Microsoft. Uh, you can place it across saying that I want to build a website and these are the things. So it will create a model where it will give you the threats, possible threats that you can uh, get into. Uh, now when I have, I have created a website example, now I have to post it on a cloud, cloud based environment, maybe as your uh, data I have to place it somewhere. Right? That poses another uh, risk. So if you have a subscription, you pay it and then say I want to use it for, for a year and then you host all your website and things like that. So in that case, uh, they pose a different security threat because you are giving away your financial information, your you know, customer information, uh, all the personal identifier and, uh, information. So that model gives you a very, very you know, first stage of security where you mitigate them and then you start developing. Before you start developing, before you write the first code. So that is where it is by design. It gives the possibility of what are the vulnerabilities 
uh, when you look at uh, SQL database, is an example. Uh, then uh, what are the storages that you are going to use? Access to the storage. All these are being uh, integrated. If you are using a cloud uh, engine, right? Uh, I'll take an example of Microsoft. Microsoft environment can host all these websites. Microsoft has an advisor which says uh, these are the possible. Uh, uh, this is a Microsoft Defender Score. I don't know if you guys are aware of. It is something like an antivirus running on your laptop, so it is running on the cloud. This will give you uh, different score. These are the vulnerabilities you will face if you deploy a website. So go mitigate them only when you deploy. Else you'll be, you know, losing lot of data or information. So that is by design. Second is by default these privileges. So something like admin privileges. Someone has uh, head. Then you get a user or maybe a read only access. Right? These are kind of different levels of uh, access. In case of corruption, in case of uh, hack, in case of uh, access by uh, admin, the easier way is to roll back to these privileges. So even if you have admin privileges, there is some uh, anomaly happening onto your uh, account. It has to roll back to these privileges and then wait for some time and give them additional chance to. Uh, so just one question. example that you could correlate with the list privileges, like uh, uh, for example, like here there are many students under one professors. So professors will be having the authority to see everyone's marks, like who won, who got, how much marks in which subjects. But a particular student should not have that particular permission. So when we talk about list privilege, it comes along with the R back, like role based authentication, like. Who is having which role? Teacher is having different role. Then he will be having his different view. Student is having student role, so he will be having or she will be having her different view. So this is what we call list privilege. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. So the difference in that whether these are all the standards that we have to deal with the default case. Uh, the interesting part is uh, for the less commonly used uh, service by default. There are a lot of services, or maybe uh, even if you have laptops, as an example, right? A lot of services that run just by no reason, just because you have accepted it to run always, or when you boot up the system. So, those are the services that you should be shutting them off. These are the kind of recommendations that Microsoft Defender gives an example that uh, this service, if you are running it for a long run, uh, it can have a malicious attack, or uh, there could be some malware plays in. You run for 24 hours, and maybe bubble up and then uh, give away the information. So those should be shut off by default. That, that is the intention of the last one in uh, secure by default. So secure in deployment, deployment guides, analysis and uh, patch deployment. So guides are like standard. So you all know more of a standard operating document. Uh, standard operating procedures rather. SOP is what we call more of standards that uh, it is a rule book. Follow the rules and then you will find. Uh, then, analysis and management tools, there are a lot of uh, tools which I can give you an example of uh, vulnerability scanning tool. I don't know if you guys know Messes, Collis, Bulbs, uh, uh, there are kind of scanning tools where you, I was giving an example of you want to host a website. Go and do the scan and see what are the vulnerabilities that are seen in market, are you uh, up to date, and then making sure you. Use them better. Patch deployments, patch deployments, uh, Microsoft is known for that. Maybe you would have faced it, you would have booted the system, and then you would have come up. There is some service error, some patch needs to be assisted. So, these are some of the examples. Make it, why are they done? Because everyone is using a lot of third party tools nowadays. You want to use something to communicate, right? You want to use Edge, Chrome. So, these are uh, Within a package, they will send, keep sending you a lot of security updates. And if you don't update, you might be in a situation where you can be attacked. So that is the reason patch deployments uh, are important. They are all automated nowadays. Most of them they just tell you so you have to update and then you just shut it down. Then communication, uh, security response and uh, communication. Security response is more of an incident response or uh, the vulnerability that we do now. Those are uh, pretty important uh, to have. Security responses were in uh, 
every organization, uh, say Microsoft, Dell, uh, Google, every organization has a security response team. So they look for all these kind of uh, daily news. They open, say, type of it an example, right? They can look for uh, new articles which are coming up as a newsletter uh, that can be uh, taken up and then uh, spread across to all the systems and the team. Now that it is not a team member's responsibility if you are affected with that particular vulnerability. If you want to see me, I don't know if you guys are aware of all the vulnerabilities that go in day in, day out. Uh, every week there will be at least a few of them. Some are affected for many systems, some of them for Windows systems, could be cloud or anything. So having those security response teams is important. Others are all uh, community engagement. Uh, like we interact and we tell the thing in your organization, which is good practice that you should uh, insert to those kind of things. Yeah. So, moving to the uh, responsive area principles. Uh, 